Are you are you presenting in person? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, hey, we're going to make this really, really, really lightning. Um, we're in Cambridge University Space Flight. We're a student-run space program. We're trying to get rockets into space by launching it from a balloon. You don't quite is, have to talk that fast, I'll let you. Which is the best thing to do. No, it's fine. We've got another thing to get through as well. Yeah. Uh, entirely funded. We've got these rounds. There's Nova, which is a name you're probably familiar with, which is our house student program for testing electronics. And then there's Comet, which is actually launching rockets from a house student balloons. You changed the name. Yeah, we have changed the name. Well, yeah. no, no, no. We came up with Comet. We still have the old names. Uh, I won't talk about Badger and Badger Club because Ed mentioned them earlier, but we've got a few new things. Um, Squirrel will be mentioned by uh, Ed C very shortly, um, and uh, we'll talk about one bat in a minute. Weasel is a project to uh, a kind of very basic Arduino tracker, uh, which we run for new space flight members every year. Um, it's been very successful over the last year, so we're probably going to run that again in the coming 12 months. Okay. Um, we've also got Martlet, which is actually the rocket itself. It's like a really nice high performance carbon fiber rocket, which we've made the mold for and made the rocket and all the rest of it. Um, and Raccoon, which is the Raccoon's flight computer. Um, there's a theme with the names here. So, Nova, we've got a permanent launch site at Churchill College, which you are probably mostly familiar with. We do a lot of launches, like about 80 now. Um, both space flight launches and other people's launches. So if you want to launch from Cambridge, we have an OTAN basically the whole time. We can launch on relatively <coughs> short notice most of the time. So, so if you chat to us, yeah. we can IRC, probably set something up. Uh, the website csf.co.uk, there's a mailing list. So if web is convenient for you, give us a shout. And then you have to sort out your own OTAN. And it's not too bad location to launch from. Um, let's get through the pictures. <laughs> yeah. Wombat we're about to talk to, so we'll come back to that in a second. Bakun is the rocket flight computer, which is going to be based on this Lisa platform from Joe Robotics, which is quite nice. And also a custom software GPS engine, because it's kind of accelerating very hard and going very fast and looks a lot like a cruise missile, and there are good reasons <laughs> normal GPSs don't work on cruise missiles. So, we're working on that. Um, Mark the rocket itself, which is um, kind of a rocket. So, we're doing a lot of rocket stuff in the immediate future and testing launching them from how to balloons and all the rest of it. Our website a bit more updated than it has been in the last few years. So, uh, yeah, you've seen why we've been busy for the last two. Yeah. So, Lots of news on right. it's coming up very soon. This is the pretty presentation. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> about space flight. flight. This is what we, yeah, I picked the theme, so my fault, but <laughs> I like to think that's a good thing. Um, NTX2, we all know and love it. It works really well. They sponsored this conference, it's nice of them. But it only comes in two frequencies, really, unless you pay a lot of money for a custom frequency. Uh, you can't program a power output. You have to buy an RG's analog circuitry to change a shift, but you can do it with PWM or other stuff. They're not cheap, I guess. It works like this. Um, yeah, so uh, fair, again, a fairly linear flow diagram of how this thing works. Um, but basically, we change voltage into the TXD pin, and uh, the output frequency shifts by giving them out. Um, so for the RTTY that we all know and love, you just put two voltages in for high and low, um, and at whatever board rate you feel like, and uh, th th that's how we do that. Okay, um, so we're looking for some other things we can use, because it's nice to have other things to use. There are lots of microchips like, people make for short range radios, stuff using like car key fobs or like this thing, all sorts of <coughs> similar kind of devices. So there's a wide range of microchips. Lots of them use really big shifts, which we can't use, like 25 kilohertz. Legally we could, but our amateur radio receivers only have like a kilohertz bandwidth on the output, so not so great. Um, some of them you can kind of mess about with them, and then they look like they're giving a small shift. And others we found will actually do small shifts built in, which is really nice of them. Um, so these are the three, three options. Um, the Badger Club and Badger Flight Peters that Ed spoke about earlier use the uh, CC111 from Texas Instruments which is fine, but in order to get to do decent r 3 y shifts, and by decent I mean ones we can use with amateur radios, um, it's a bit hacky. You basically have to change the carrier frequency um, every time you want to uh, change, go from a zero to a one instead of actually transmitting data. Um, so the two we looked at for our, our, our two prototypes, which we'll see in a minute, are the ADF 7012 from Analog Devices, which is a, um, a program frequency detect type thing. It's, it's, all, um, it's all programmable. Um, program including alpha power, um, center frequency, all that kind of thing. The other thing is the, uh, the this micro radio, which um, 
the aim of this was to kind of basically replace the NTX2, um, but with something that uh, um, has a settable center frequency um, and is also much, much smaller and lighter and significantly cheaper. Okay, so it's the CC1111, which we've kind of heard about a bit before. It works, but it's an 8051, and no one really likes programming 8051s, some people <laughs> pretend to. Um, you can get small RT twice shifts, but you do it by kind of changing what it thinks its central frequency is rather than actually using its modulation stuff. It's okay, it works. Handfit can also do uplink. Um, actually, there's an ADF702 one, which can also do uplink. I haven't played with that yet. Uplink's really neat, and it's kind of a fun thing to play with, but the, two which, uh, the other two we're showing don't do that. So, yeah. But the uplink's really awful because actually we integrate the RSSI level to do our TTY reception, which is. <laughs> Really, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, really yeah. high power to do that, don't you? It's yeah, it's not. Ground. Yeah, but that's fine because we can like blast it with our amateur AJs at so like 400 watts. You do need a license to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's also not really the way to do it. So yeah. anyway, <laughs> it works. The point is, it works. Well, it's <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> so this is really so the, uh, the the micro radio is um, it basically provides all the R most of the RF stuff of the NTX2 into a single tiny little uh, 10 10. Five by five mil. I see. It's tiny. Um, it just takes a base frequency uh, from a crystal and multiplies it by thirty-two, um, and the output is then output fed through a power amplifier. Uh, that, that's the RF output stage. Um, that's right. Uh, the, um, the way we change frequency is by pulling the crystal. So you change the capacitance in the crystal load line, and uh, that slightly changes the frequency, which is what we do with the NTX2. What does it look like? Yeah. yeah. So this is this is the very first prototype. This is a bit That's the chip. Here's the output filter. Here's the crystal pulling stuff. You can make the whole thing quite a lot smaller if we want to sign it to be a big proto board. Yeah. This was. It, it, this could be shrunk. This and still should have ten output there. Um, and so there's honey schematic. Can you get that Yeah. So. You're going to get that approved. Maybe. <laughs> it turns out legislation is really complicated and boring, but for a lot of these things, you can self-approve it as long as you also self-certify it, and you can do that, and it's not too hard. But the legalities, it's really messy, but um, you kind of can. So well, maybe. it does work. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this prototype the other day, turned it on, and uh, it's great. Um, it works really nicely. We vary the voltage on tune using a bench power supply, and we can get, um, what are the shifts we measure? Down to like, about 25 hertz, I think. Less than that, 10 hertz. Yeah. 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 Really, so, really tiny shifts. So MFSK is easily doable with this radio. So it basically replaces an NTX2, except it's smaller lighter, and also you can change frequency because it's a much bigger range, so less flashes. So it's quite nice. Um, right, ADF7012, the diagram I shouldn't be bothered at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has a fraction in PLL, so you can actually program its frequency, it does much cleverer shifts, it can do all sorts of funny sounding modes and different ways of shifting. Its output goes from 75 megahertz to a gigahertz, which is like a massive possible frequency output, but the hardware you choose on the board will kind of decide what you can get away with because you have an output filter before the antenna. Um, but at 44 megahertz, you can do 300 hertz shifts for RTTY directly using its built-in modulator, so it's kind of neat. You can program the output power from tiny to more than we're allowed. Um, <laughs> you can program a frequency on the board from anywhere in 433, 433 to 435, so the whole license exempts 7 centimeter band, which means you could fly loads of these at once, like 70 or 80, and it wouldn't be a big deal. I was just to say, on the, on the micro board, there's also um, a variable capacitor which allows you to set the center frequency. So and we, we get around the uh, fixed frequency problem with the NTX2 with that board as well. Does it output a square wave though, or, or a sine wave? This. Does it have a sine lookup table internally to generate a um, No, it's a PLL with a loop filter. So it's a sine Oh, it's natural yeah. PCO inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the input to this is actually just a straight digital input. So you just stick it up to your 5 yeah, volt yeah. Arduino pin and you just say on or off, and that gives you your 300 hertz shift. Just on the I'm mucking around with res various resistors and trying to set up change the right voltages. You literally just. Talk straight so, yeah. We made another PCB, uh, there's no Ferrari 2 inductor, that's fun to solder, but basically it's okay, and um, it works, that's good. So, yeah, schematics of these as well. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's all some hardware. Uh, I don't think schematics are online yet, but they will be shortly. Are they just the reference designs anyway? Um, yeah, kind of. The, the, the mid row <laughs> one, um, they don't tell you to do that. Yeah. They don't want you to do that. But really. crucially, as far as the open source stuff goes, this one back project we're now working on, which is a flight computer, like a reference flight computer, um, in two parts. Crucially, one of them is a radio module, so it has this ADF7012, it's a typo, and also an AVR built in, which control has like some firmware on it, so you can talk to the AVR and it will do all the radio stuff you want it to do. So you can say, hey, change frequency to this, and it will then program the radio chip itself. So it's really happy and easy to use, and um, 
this kind of you could use it in seven antics to one of the other radios it will weigh very little and it's quite nice but what you can also do is plug it in to the other half which is a gps module with a u-block six which is tiny and really lightweight and lipo or whatever circuitry and then you can run flight computer code on the AVR instead of radio code and it does the whole thing as one really small really lightweight flight computer what's the price on the ad's there? Uh, it's like three pounds plus maybe five pounds Yes, plus a couple of pounds on passives. Yeah. So it's, it's really cheap. Um, yeah, so that's it for this. Um, we'll probably s have some quick questions if anyone wants some quick questions. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Um,